Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Mac Daddy Pete Robertson. Hello, hello, hello. Man, really it's good? good to be back in the studio, Pete. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's been, we've been, it's been weird for the last month. Well, we've been cruising for a month. It's not just that, it's just. <laughs> Things have been all off. Oh, I mean, we, we should talk about our lives over the last it's been four crazy. weeks. It's crazy. Yeah, there's been a lot going on. My daughter got married. Yes, you fun. had a we had a wedding. So it's like four weddings and a funeral. No, <laughs> no, we didn't have a, a funeral. Cruise, a cruise, a <laughs> wedding, a hurricane. And yeah, we had a hurricane man. that shut us down for a week. It's been crazy. Yeah, we had a hurricane. We're, we're okay. Shout out to Hurricane Ian. Ian, 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 Ian yeah. whatever. But he flooded a lot of people. Still, yeah, still flooded. My wife and I in July for her birthday in the middle of July, we went down to Fort Myers, Bonita Springs, Naples, oh. Sanibel Island. And that's um, right. I forgot. Yeah. And now they, you can't even get to Sanibel right no. now. No. And we were looking at the, the, um, what is that? The pier completely wiped out. We were just walking on it. You know, I bought these dudes there. That's right. I so remember the, the me one about location right there in Fort Myers gone. where the pier is, it's all been gone. Yeah. It's so crazy. That, that store that I bought my dudes from. Um, you might've got the last pair of dudes. You never know. So if anybody shout out to the dude, the dudes, what are they called? Dudes or what are they? I, called I, don't, I don't have a pair. Anyways, there's these shoes that are very comfortable. And if you're a big guy, I highly recommend you go get some dudes because they're really good. They must be comfortable. You and Barry both have a pair. Yeah. We're both big guys. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't say that you did. What's the truth. You can't deny it. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, our prayers go out to and sincerely go out to the folks down in, in Southwest yeah, it's Florida. Bad. It's bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's the Sanibel Island is isolated. The bridge causeway yeah. got wiped out. Um, Fort Myers beach just I, looks, I mean, it's, it looks like a war zone. Well, they it's, can't, it's awful. I know from Santa Barbara Island, they can't, they don't have any electric or I don't think still yeah. electric or anything. Well, and, and I said, they're not turning it on because they're still doing search. Yeah. They're still doing, you know, you don't want to turn power on yeah. electrocute and electrocute people. somebody yeah. that's, that's survived for four days or a week now, I guess. And they're not able to get there because the bridge is completely gone in two parts. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. So if you can help, um, in any way, um, please do that. Um, prayers, of course. Um, yeah, I'm well. just, I'm trying to figure out, there's, I know there's a team that, there's teams that are going down there to help with debris removal and stuff. Um, I would love to maybe be a part of that or something. Like I, was, I was listening today, just different opportunities. I mean, there's one thing to give money to help these people, um, but it's another thing to maybe actually get there. Yeah, maybe you know, help. our friend Jeremiah was down there helping last week. So yeah. he, he went down there with yeah. the, for roofing or what? Did, yeah, what I think so. Do? Yeah, just I don't know what exactly, but he was telling me just you know it, it's it's bad, it's really bad. Yeah. So yeah, we got to get Jeremiah on the show. We talk, we talk so about much. Well, he's, he's going to listen to the show before we can get him. He's on the show. impacted our lives, I guess. Hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he's a brother, and That's he can true. cook up a storm, right? Yeah, he can. Yeah. So you uh, you married off your youngest. Yep, she's she's married. It's kind of crazy. Can you believe it? No, I couldn't. I mean, it, it really, it was, I mean, it didn't hit me until his Barry was able to marry them. Um, when he started doing the vows with her and I was like, Whoa, it hit me. Wow. Yeah. And then the weirdest part was we're, we're doing the daughter, daddy, daughter dance. Right. And we're, we're dancing and all of a sudden we look around and there's like a 40 different phones recording us. <laughs> And I, you know how it feels like the paparazzi, how they feel like all these phones on you. That's how it felt. And both of us looked at it and looked at each other and like, what in the world? This is awkward, right? It just felt weird. The and modern, so, the modern wedding, huh? Right. And so then we started, we were trying to crack each other up, but then all of a sudden people started crying, right? Cause the song was emotional. Yeah, song. And it was so, touching. Yeah. So we started looking around and these tears, right. And then I'm looking at the tears and faith then starts crying. I'm like, Oh, don't do this to me. <laughs> don't do this to me. So I got a little teary eyed, but man, that was rough, but that was nice. You know, it we've was been, a beautiful wedding. We've it been dancing really nice. to that for that song for a while. It was, um, what was that? What was the song? Steve Kirchner Satman song. I forget. Cinderella. Oh yeah. yeah. Cinderella. Yeah. It's yeah. a beautiful song. Yeah. It was fun. It's funny. But now my daughter's asking me, Oh, what song are we going to play when I get married? I'm like, you're 11. Slow your roll. Well, I saw you dancing with her. So yeah. That was nice. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. She's like, daddy, 
dance with and me. then we got to dance with our spouses at the end there yeah. that was nice very cool yeah yeah it would have been bad if we didn't do that so mm. that was good that we got to yeah yeah, yeah, Robert was our DJ, and he he got us all on the floor. And, he killed it, man. He yeah. did a great job. He did a, a really a good natural. job. That kid's yeah. amazing. Shout out to you, Robert. Yeah, yeah Robert. I yeah. hope you're listening. Yeah. That was awesome. His wife Kylie led the she uh, the baby shower kind of thing, so that was a lot of fun. Let that out of the bag. So. Yeah. Well, now that you mention it, Grandpa, <laughs> how excited are you to be a grandpa? <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about that more later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that'll be a little bit down the road. We'll yeah. talk about that, but yeah. uh, very exciting. Mm. Very exciting. Looking and praying, that, looking forward to meeting Jelly Bean. Yeah, that's the, that's the nickname. All right. Yeah. So hurricanes, weddings. Yeah. What um, else? The cruise. Yeah, we the were going for that. episode. Can 100th you believe episode. this is 101? So we're into the second hundred now. That's just nuts. Right? Yeah, it's nuts. I, I We should do at least a cruise every hundred, though. That was well, I, that was amazing. I really believe or every ten. If God allows, <laughs> I feel like on location is really cool. It was cool. And so I remember when we were in Carousel and we did it, it yep. felt awkward at first. Yeah. We're like, what are we doing? I know it was kind of weird. But, but if, it was different because we'd never done it before. If we did it all the time, yeah, I think we I think it would become really good. And I think if we just get in the public, even interview people and just. Well, I think we got better at even during the cruise. So go back and watch episode 100 that the section that we did overlooking Central Park. Yeah. I thought was phenomenal. I, oh, thought, yeah. that, I thought that came out really, 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 well. really good. So, um, yeah, that, that was really cool. It, so I think you're right. We just have to do it more. I would love to do it though. So like, remember we talked about last year going to Italy and doing that yeah. on location. When are we doing that? April? But, but I mean, we don't have to just go to Italy though. We could just go anywhere. I, I think I just, That's true. I think we should do that. I think we, and we don't have to do, we could do segments kind of like what we did. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't know. And I just, I like the idea of, you know, interviewing people. I know it's uncomfortable. Maybe our producer can go and, and talk to people first and get them, get them ready. Get them warmed up. Yeah. And then bring them to us yeah. afterwards. So we don't have to do that. <laughs> that. That would be a great idea. She's shaking her head. Yes. She's saying she will do that for you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that would be fun. So anyway, I would like to do that. That would be fun. And I just being in public, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I love talking Amen. about Jesus. It doesn't matter where I'm at. And so, you know, and bold, and we're going to talk about a little bit about doing public talking today. And, and maybe there's consequences to that, but we could talk about that. But I mean, I don't know. That'd be fun. It would be. Yeah. All right. I think that's a good idea. We should start doing that. We should start doing that more. All right. Anything else? No, Those think, are, that's a lot of big stuff that's yeah. been going on. So that's kind of been the Riot podcast uh, last four weeks or so. Yeah. It's been, it's been a whirlwind in our, well, hurricane wind too. Yep. It's been crazy. It's been yep. crazy. All right. Well, I'll open us up in prayer and then we'll get started. You don't mind? Yep. All right. Let's do it. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to serve and to bring this podcast together for our listeners. We thank you for them. Um, whether there's one or a thousand, it doesn't matter, Lord. We just we just pray that you will use this podcast uh, for your glory to draw people closer to you, to help us each individually as a, as a host, as a producer, the people behind the scenes in this show, and then the people that are actually listening to it uh, or watching us on YouTube, Lord, I just pray that through all of that, that you would be glorified and that our relationships would grow with you. So Father, we give you this show now. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I was just thinking it's, it, we are, um, again, on episode 101. I mean, the way that we've spread is when people share it, you know? So if you went to riotpodcast.co, yeah. you can you can share that, or you can go into our YouTube channels or our Facebook channels. Um, and then I think we're in Twitter and Instagram. I think we're all over the place. But if they shared it, but, but I was just thinking, um, I know for a fact what we do, ministers to people because of the testimony and yeah. it's it's pretty cool getting people's comments from like shows that we did last year yeah. right and and i was just we were praying before the show and we spent time in prayer and then i had this weird vision that this show so if the person's listened to this but this show was going to be listened to by somebody in five years and it's going to radically help you and i but, I, but that doesn't mean it's not going to help somebody right now sure. today but that was just kind of weird. And it's, and it's, and it hit me that this is, it's surreal. We're sitting here talking about Jesus, having fun and, and, you know, building each other up. And then we grow a lot from this. 
But at the same time, I know that it just blesses the ministers. And so our heart's desire is that we are able to just unpack God's word in such a way that it makes it easy for you to get, understand, and relate it and be able to apply it to your life. And that's kind of why we're doing what we're doing. That's a cool thought. I think a show released on October 13th of 2022 could you know, maybe point someone, point someone to God in, you know, 2027. That's, that's kind of cool to even think about. Yeah, it is. Well, we're jumping back into the book of John and it's been a while, right? Yeah. Because of all these different things going on. So this is fun. So it's been about a month since we last studied uh, the book of John at all. And we're going to title this one, the worship triumph and tears. Mm. So we're going to be in John 12 and we're going to kick it off starting in verse one. And I don't know how far we'll get probably 19 verses, something like that. So we have taken over kind of the last few weeks and really been celebrating our hundredth episode and all that stuff that's, that goes along with that. Yeah, Episode 99 was on, we actually did that on the cruise. That was really cool. Yep. Um, having that backdrop. So if you want to see, if you're on YouTube, you can see the backdrop. It's the ocean in the background. So beautiful. Yeah. 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 God's wonder all yeah. around. It was very, really crazy. But man, 100, 100 episodes, I still can't believe it. What a ride this has been. It's crazy. So this is 101. And uh, because 101, it's like it's the start of our second it's 100. Kind of weird. Yeah. It's like we're reborn again. <laughs> because I just, I just think, what can we do that's different? Or how can we adjust or whatever? Uh, but we've evolved over these last 100 years from where we were at the beginning. The 100 years. Today. There's that 100 years again. Yeah. It is. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. We're not that old, folks. It's no, really, it's we, yeah, we do one episode a year and uh, it's been a hundred. No, yeah. uh, it's easy to get slip into that. We will, uh, like I said before, we're going to be in John uh, 12 verses one through 19. And uh, in this, we're going to see John record his second major crisis in the ministry of Jesus mm. as it was seen by the apostles. Yeah. So if you remember, the first one occurred when many of his disciples no longer walked with Jesus. Uh, it was documented in John 6. Six chapter six verse sixty six. You know what? That should have been a clue right there, Pete. <laughs> that that there was going to be an issue when it's when it's chapter six verse sixty six. Maybe that's not going to go well. Yeah, that was the chapter where he was talking about drinking my blood and eating my flesh. It's so crazy, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And of course, the numbers, you know, when John's writing this, there's no chapters and verses that got it yeah. added later. But, you know, we say that it was a crisis. But in reality, I think Jesus did this on purpose. I mean, he, he was always looking for who was his. Yeah. And so he would do things. And we're going to see it again in this chapter. He would do things to weed out <laughs> the people that are just followers because they want food or because they wanted something from God. He's the genie God, right? He's not the relationship They wanted to see the magic show or whatever, right? Yeah. All right. So John opens his book by telling us that Jesus came unto his own world and his own people received him not. We read this in verse uh, verse 11 of chapter one. In the first 12 chapters, John represents one witness after another and one proof after another to convince us that Jesus is indeed the Christ. Yeah, more than any other writer, yeah. John it goes above and beyond to prove that what he, who he is, is God. It's period. like he's just trying to drill it into our heads, right? More than he any other. He is God. Absolutely. All of this evidence was seen firsthand by the leaders of the nation, and yet they rejected his claims. We see here in John 12, Jesus, as he relates to four different groups of people. There are lessons that we can learn as we study this section. So yeah. let's jump into it. Okay. John 12, 1 through 19. No, Six- no, go through 1 through 11 to start. All right. Yeah. Break it down a little bit. Yeah. All right. Six days before the Passover, Jesus, therefore, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus Lazarus was one of the ones reclining with him at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Jesus, uh, but Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he is the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because, it, because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. So Jesus says to him, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor, you always will have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of of Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. 
So the chief priest made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. Wow. I mean, I, I was just thinking that part where John's talking about Judas Iscariot saying he was a thief. I wonder how long they knew this. I wonder how many of them might have came to Jesus and said, hey, do you know he's stealing from the money box? You know, and I wonder if Jesus says, yeah, I know. And it's like, well, shouldn't you do anything? He says, no, in time, it, hmm. it'll come back to him. You know, I don't know. But I mean, I'm just yeah, I'm that's wondering. Interesting. Yeah, because the way that he that said it here is like, how long did he know that? Well, when did that all reveal? We know him? Jesus knows. So yeah. clearly he knows. I don't know if they knew. Because well, something at the Last Supper, remember when, when he kind of like slips out? None of them it yeah, was, seemed suspicious, I, though. But. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, it was like the way that he's saying it here is like it was all revealed somehow. You hmm. know, was it after the fact? Maybe. Or did know. they know before? Who knows? What's Nard? Uh, it's like a like a like a uh, I don't know, like a um, sub like a gooey kind of thing. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. I, I visualize it, but I can't explain it. I mean, it sounds like lard. So I'm yeah. thinking, is it like the consistency yeah. of lard, but it smells really good? Absolutely. Obviously, it filled the room with the perfume smell. Yeah. So that, that's a good thing. But yeah. Well, I mean, the, the key of this, the first part. So the first part of it is just talking about, okay, Jesus is now going back to Bethany. Okay. So Jesus knew that the Jewish leaders were out to arrest him. There's no doubt about it. They knew that they wanted to kill him. He knew that. I mean, they knew that, right? But we read it, remember, in what was it, John 11, the first 53 and 57, they actually came out and says, hey, how do we kill this guy? How are we going to arrest him and so right. forth? But he still returned to Bethany. So it's about two miles from the the citadel where the people and everybody's going to arrest him and, and all that. But he still went back. So you always ask the question, well, why did he do that? You know, if he knows that they're there. And, and they're going to kill him. Yeah. So why? But why would you go back even then? And so that was kind of the thought. Um, but he, I mean, I, I figured that one of the main reasons was so that he could spend time with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He knew his time was coming to an end. Um, and so he did that. Um, but, um, you know, and then I, I made this slide note, but true to their personalities, Martha was busily serving and Mary was worshiping at his feet. I mean, it just... He, it's not a coincidence that they put this in here, right? Yep. I mean, they just made that point again. But um, yeah, he did. I love the details that John shares in his book. It's it's amazing. But yeah, they were true to their character, right? We're not gonna. We're not gonna. We'll get get into this a little bit later. Um, but the main reason is because Jesus wanted to stir this hornet's nest, and he had an agenda. And his agenda was to be obedient to the father. And he was going to fulfill Zechariah 9.9. Nine. We're going to get into this and we're going to talk about this in, in depth. But, you know, you ask the question, why? Well, the question is because Jesus, one, wanted to spend time with his friends, obviously, because his time is coming near. But two is because he wasn't afraid of man. And, yeah. and he went directly into the hornet's nest and he was just like, hey, here I am, bring it on. And, and there, there was a reason behind it. And um, so, you know, remember how many times did he say, my, my time has not yet come mm -hmm. or, you know, don't go tell anybody yet, yep. you know, keep that quiet. Well, but, he's not, but doing now that. he's not doing that anymore. Right now. He's just like boldly just boom. You know, he tells them straight up and in, in chapter 11, he's like, dude, I'm God. Hello. You know, how, what else do I got to tell you? You know, I'm telling you is as plain as I could possibly tell you that I am the father are one. And if you would have known the father, you would have known me. That's right. So he's, he's definitely intensifying his conversations, but it makes me think, you know, how many times have we been fearful? How many times have we not gone somewhere or put ourselves in a position where we knew that we're going to be attacked or, um, you know, something in a fearful way where we're scared, you know, we fear man. Um, we've all been in the, in, in, um, in, in presence of people that we're fearful of. I mean, it's, you know, that person is just, Ooh, that person's intimidating. Yeah, right? scary. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've all been through there. Um, but what Jesus was proving to us here is that what over overthrows man or what we are to do is what Jesus did. And that is, we are to fear him and that we are to be obedient in him. And so God 
gave Jesus uh, a direct command or an order. Jesus was fulfilling that, and he did not let man dictate what was going to happen. There was a heavenly plan that he wasn't going to let man so that, change. That sets up exactly what's going on here. And, and so that now kind of gives us the context to where we're going to be going with that. So, okay. all right. Yeah. Well, in verse three, we see Mary anointing Jesus's feet uh, in three different parts of the Bible. This is this account is documented. Matthew, I think Matthew 26. Yeah. Six uh, to 13. Mark 14, three through nine. Yeah. And then so if you combine all three of those accounts, you learn that Mary not only anointed uh, Jesus's feet, but also his head. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Feet. So have you ever taken the accounts and all the different and you see the, the little variances in yeah. each one of them? It's pretty fun. Yeah. And so when you do that in this in this, you know, chapter 12, verse two, or wherever it's three, it, you can see that it's talking about anointing his feet and, and then she's wiping her hair with his mm -hmm. feet. But then the other passage, it's talking about, well, she's anointing his whole body, his head, everything, um, and just preparing him for burial. But I thought that was really cool. But, you know, the, the demonstrates an act of pure love on her part. You know I mean? She knew Jesus was about to endure suffering and death. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that was the talk, you know, it's everybody's talking about it. He's going right in their backyard again. There's no doubt. So in a sense, Mary was showing her devotion to Jesus before it was too late. Her act of love and worship was public. It was spontaneous. Mm. It was sacrificial, it was lavish, it was personal, and it was unembarrassed. And uh, Jesus called it a good work and commit, com commended her and he even defended her. Yeah. But, you know, something that I, as I just read that just really pops. I mean, think about it in our own life, her love, her act of love and worship was public. She wasn't ashamed of Jesus. Mm -hmm. She made a public, she was saying, I'm boldly, I am boldly doing this in my, in my, in my outward, whatever, to show that I love you period. And then it was spontaneous. She didn't think about it. She just said, no, I'm going to glorify my Lord right now. I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to do it, not just in a way I'm going to do it where it costs me everything because that's my dedication and my love for him. And, and she did that. She was sacrificial. She was lavish. And, and then more than anything else, it was personal. It, it was, it was a, it was just saying, I have a relationship with you. That's deep. I know you, Jesus. I know you. And, and that's what she was showing us right here. Yeah. And when I read that, I just like, ah. what a picture of that. She is just lavishing her love on her savior and doesn't care what anybody around her thinks. No. Uh, just, and in was, fact, Jesus even defends her when Judas mm, said, Oh, what do you, you know, you're wasting it, your money. Like, it gives me goosebumps because nothing mattered at that moment. No. All she can, all just Jesus. She, yeah. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Statement three, it would have required years worth of wages for a common labor to purchase that ointment. Like David, Mary would not give the Lord, which did not cost her anything. Or yeah, remember when you, cost her nothing. David said that, remember when the water came back and he was dehydrated and thirsty? Or no, that was that was one part and he dumped it out. The other part was when he bought the, the plot where, uh, remember the, the ark fell and it killed one of his servants. And he was like, oh, I'm going to buy this. This thing is, oh, no, sir, you can have you can it. He's have like, it. no, no, I'm going to. So those are two different parts that I thought of. So Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, her beautiful act of worship brought a, fragrant, a fragrance to the very house in which they were dining. And the blessing on her deed, of her deed was, has spread throughout the world. Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, this was a big deal. Yeah. This is in the book, right? We're reading about it right that's now. That's true. Good point. Right? <laughs> uh, but I mean, imagine the smell, the aroma. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, it was, she did it. Because she knew something inside of me, and it was probably the spirit moving. He's going to be dead soon. She knew, yeah. yeah. And and you know we're going to prepare his body ahead of time right now. But I mean, it's just the the smell, the aroma. And the Bible says that when we pray, that it's the aroma, the uh, incense, incense of heaven. That's right. And so it's just it's wow. I never thought about it that yeah. way before. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's just it's Oof. the symbolism right there. It's just it's you know it's setting it up every time that we do something for Jesus where we're sacrificing ourselves to elevate him, to love on him, to have a personal lavish relationship with him. Wow. That's an aroma. It's an incense in heaven. It is. It's just, it's wow. sweet, sweet smelling. So, 
That's good. We can end the show right there. That's really good. <laughs> but like Mary, our love for Christ will bless others around us and leave lasting impacts in other people's lives. Amen. You know, and I always ask the question in my own life, am I sacrificing for Jesus? And mm. it's, it's not like sacrificing for, because it's like hurting me, but I mean, my sacrifice is because I'm making him first, yeah. right? Am I, am I making him priority? And in, in this instance, in, in the personal relationship that Mary had with Jesus, um, she did, you know, she was, she was saying that you are number one. And, and, you know, in my heart, I want that to be, I don't want, I don't want my workplace to, to take over that. Mm -hmm. I don't want my friends to take over that, my family, my wife, whatever I want. I want to wake up in the morning and just say, God, I want you, I, you know, speak to me today. Um, reveal your truth to me. Help me to adjust my life. Help me to help me to love people the way that you love them. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't want to throw stones today, God. I, I want to put those away. I, I just, I want to wash people's feet. And, and I, you know, I'm selfish. You know, I'm just real honest. I'm selfish. I, I'm tired at times. I'm, I get caught up in my own way. You know, and you know, Mary is just teaching us so much. And mm. she's just saying, no, I, I'm going to sacrifice. Why doesn't nothing matters to me? So beautiful. No. What a picture. Yeah. Notice that when Mary came to the feet of Jesus, she was taking the place of a slave. When she undid her hair, something Jewish women did not do in public. No. She humbled herself and laid her glory at his feet. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. I mean, it's just, it, and again, she, I don't care what people think. Yeah. It, it's, I, I'm going to use my hair to wipe his feet. Mm. I'm, I don't care. I just know how do I empty myself to the, to the, to my core? How do I, how do I, how do I humble myself to, as much as I possibly can? What do I, what can I do God today for you? Man, what a picture. <clears throat> I struggle with this all the time. Pete. It's like always thinking about, you know, what are people, what will people think? What will, you know, whether it's in work or just, it's, I, I guess it's human nature, but I struggle with that. Yeah. I, I, I want to be able to, I want to be able to worship like Mary does here. It, it's it, really good. It's like, you know, because people misunderstood him. Obviously they, they didn't know what are you doing, Mary? What's going on? But it's like when, when the Holy spirit gets a hold of you and let's, you know, just say for instance, like, you know, you had the experience with your daughter. There's something that happens when God meets you, right? When you, when you have this awakening or something in your life, it, all you can do is like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed, yeah. right? And, and we, we're not overwhelmed with God is because we don't know God that way. We're not in a relationship that way. And it's like Jesus knows us deeply mm -hmm. and he wants us to know him deeply. And the more that we press in, the more that we know him you know, it might, you know, there might be something like I've been sitting in my car and I just start crying for this person right in front of me that's walking across the street. Or I, I, I remember it was a time when I've just, all of a sudden I went to my knees because this miracle happened in front of me. And I remember going to my knees and just raising my hands in public. And I just like, God, oh my gosh, I'm just, I love you. I love you. And I don't think anybody was around, but if anybody was around, they might look at me like, what is wrong with that freak? Right. You know, man, <laughs> I start crazy. talking. Yeah. Some, but if it's when, when Jesus does something in you, you do things that are different. And, and it's good. not that you're trying to draw attention to yourself. Everything is about him and everything that is happening in you is, is pointing to him and, and it's good and it's amazing and it's gentle, and it's kind, and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. and so that's what's going on here, and I, you know, try to get that picture in our heads. It's pretty cool. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. In verses four through six, uh, John records that the disciple Judas Iscariot's first words found anywhere in the four Gospels. His last words are found in Matthew 7, 27, 4, where he says, I have betrayed innocent mm -hmm. blood. 
We know that Judas was a thief and was in the habit of stealing money from the money box. There, can you imagine that? Yeah. Like, hey, this is uh, <clears throat> you're stealing money out of Jesus's money. He box. wasn't all in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no doubt at this moment in time, Judas has decided to abandon Jesus and wanted to get what he could out of what he considered a bad situation. Yeah, this happened to me. So, I mean, like when you really study your Bible, you're going to come to this like, wait, this is the first time that John, Judas Iscariot ever talked, right? You know, and then you're like, well, then, you know, the last words where I've betrayed innocent blood. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. But when you're not all in, you don't trust God. You know, I, I wonder how Judas Iscariot thought when he looked into the money changer and, and he took out five coins and then he went back another day and it was still the five coins are still there. I wonder how that blew his mind. It's like, wait, I thought I stole that. You know, <laughs> I keep taking money out and it still keeps replenishing. How's that happening? Um, but that's again, Jesus always will take care of us. He'll always provide, even if somebody's trying to steal from you, even if there's somebody that's trying to backstab you, even the, no matter what, God is faithful. And, and Judas Iscariot was did whatever he could to betray Jesus, and Jesus still overcame that betrayal. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the same thing that happens in our own life. There's going to be moments in our lives that someone's going to hurt you. Things are going to happen. They're going to lie about you. They're going to steal from you. They're going to do something. God has a plan. And, it, and even Judas was doing what he was doing, and it, he still fulfilled his plan. Nothing will get in the way of what God's going to do. God still uses it. Uh, there are yeah. moments in our life when we, we test the true nature of our heart, and we're walking in the flesh out of, our, out of ourselves, or are we walking in the spirit? Look at the sacrifice for Jesus. Um, I have no idea what I'm talking about there, but that's, that's exciting <laughs> that I said it. So let's move on. All right. As we look at this event, we see three yes. different styles or different lifestyles represented in which all, all are examples of us. Yeah. So in, you know, different times, Martha yeah. represents work. Yep. We see that in the story of Martha and, and yep. Mary all the yep. time. As she served the dinner, Mary represents worship. Yep. Um, and Lazarus represents witness. Yeah. So I understand yeah. this, the scene at that time was, you know, he's in Bethany. Okay. So yeah, they're probably there to see him. But a lot of people are already there to see Lazarus. Yeah, because they heard he, he was oh, dead and now he's alive. Yeah, he's a spectacle. There's right? no doubt about it. I mean, he said they, in this in this chapter, it says he's lounging, right? He's just kicking back. <laughs> he's like, man, I got a good life right now. Um, but he was a witness. There's anybody that sees Lazarus, they immediately associate him with Jesus. Yeah. And so he's a witness. And and so as we're talking about, you know, worship and, and work and witness, you know, do people, are we representing Jesus when we're working? Hmm. Are we representing Jesus when we're, when we're worshiping? Are we representing Jesus when we're yeah. as a witness? And so, you know, when people see us, do we they ought to immediately be. know that? We want to be. Yeah, as a Christian, we should have a beautiful balance of worship, work, and witness. We right. should examine our own hearts and our homes and ask ourselves, are we bringing joy to God's heart by our worship, our work, and our witness? I mean, it... Mm. You know, we've said this many times on the show. I mean, it's without beating the bush, but it's like, if we're before God, then our lifestyle is going to be for God. If we're not, then our lifestyle is going to be inconsistent. I mean, Revelation 3 said that he wants to vomit you out of his mouth. He does not want you lukewarm. Right. So this is all aspects of our life, our work or, you know, and our real witness to him. It goes back to our around. living mission-minded shows, right? Yep, absolutely. All, all right. right. Let's read... Um... The rest of our text today, yeah, 12 through 19. 12 through 19. Let's see here. If I can find my place. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Mm. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done, uh, done to him. Yeah. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done the sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that, see, <laughs> easy for me to say, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Mm. 
Yeah, it's it, we change gears here. So we see here John shifting the scene from a quiet dinner in Bethany to a noisy public parade in Jerusalem. All four gospels record this event at their account should be compared. So there's we're going to compare a little bit. But this is this was the only public demonstration that Jesus allowed while he was ministering on earth. His purpose was to fulfill, as we said at the beginning, the Old Testament prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. The result was a growing animosity, animosity on the part of the religious leaders that eventually led to his crucifixion on the cross. And um, it's talking about him riding on a colt and coming in and yeah. being Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah. So, um, but anytime we worship Jesus in public, there's always a possibility of provoking a side that would want you dead or silent. So it's like... Um, and there's parts of the world where this is a lot more likely than, you know, where, where we live. We can sit at Disney Springs and, you know, probably not going to get you know, well, murdered was, for it. But Well, I watched the, and then this is not talking about witnessing, but I watched the vid YouTube video the other day or a girl and as this white girl and she was standing up and just talking in a normal way. And this black girl with all the other black girls around were just talking about her and say you liar you did it and she was no i wasn't doing trying to do anything like that i wasn't whatever anyway so the black girl had enough and she started beating up on her and then all the other girl her friends all got on and they were all just beating this girl up this wow. is in high school and for nothing she was not doing anything she was just talking we don't know the full context but that's what happened I've been in places where um, I was in uh, I was in Morocco in the in the in the village areas way in the middle of nowhere, and we would start talking about Jesus in these sooks. And man, I would like literally within seconds we would have fifty men right there, and it was like it was a little intimidating because as we were talking, they would talk the way that Muslims would talk is they would talk in a heated way. They yell. They get they they get real passionate. And um, they were getting really passionate. And I'm thinking, hmm, I feel a little unsafe here. Um, well, lo and behold, that feeling that I had, well, there was that same area, uh, another missionary or something that was caught on tape were saying, doing and talking with people and they mobbed them and they started to attack them and they started beating them up. Um, but I've had it where I've talked with people. And in public, and all of a sudden, the person would start raising their voice, and they mm. would start accusing me or calling me names or whatever. And I was just being nice. Well, the way the opposition shuts you out is they call you names. The yeah. way the opposition shuts you up is they'll start yelling at you, or they'll start accusing you, or they'll start doing different things. So the, if you're in public and you're worshiping Jesus, or you're doing something, there's a possibility that there's going to be an uproar. Um, but Jesus wasn't afraid of that. Jesus knew that that was going to happen. He knew that that was going to take place. He knew that him being there is a possibility of death. And in the bottom line is that we are witnesses of Christ and that we are ready in season and out of season. We put on our full armor of God as Ephesians 6. And we have to understand that we need to be battle ready every day. Hmm. And that when we get ready to go into the world, that we are, we are warriors for Christ and that the Bible says that greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. And that we are to go with that mentality that, hey, I am going out into the world and I'm going to kick Satan's butt. I'm going to love as many people. I'm going to share truth with as many people. I'm going to elevate people. I'm going to, I'm going to share with them things that they've never even heard of. And I'm going to love them and I'm going to sacrifice and I'm going to do things in the name of Jesus so that Satan does not have a foothold. Yeah. But no that there's an enemy. Know that there's an opposition. And if you are not battle ready and you're not preparing yourself before you leave that road, you, you might get attacked and you might not be ready to defend it. You might be ready not to get through that, but know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be there. No, even if you were getting beat up, because Paul got beat up all the time, even if that was taking place, God is still in the midst of it. Right. He's still good. I remember when Stephen was being stoned. I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I, I get the impression reading that story that he wasn't feeling any pain. It's like, yeah, Jesus, he was in the presence of Jesus. All he saw was Jesus. Yeah. He, like, they're killing him. He's just looking at him and probably, yeah. I, man. But I mean, I, I think there's people need to hear this. And I, and it's like, don't don't shy away from being bold for Jesus. Listen. We have a duty and a calling. Every one of us has a purpose. 
you, we need to go into the world. Do not lock yourself in the room. Do not find your click at church. And that's where you stay. Good. We got to be willing to go into the world. We got, hmm. my wife and I have habits that we just go and we observe people and we watch and we look for opportunities. How can we love on people today? I, we, I don't know how God's going to use it, but I want us to be vulnerable and put ourselves in that position. But no, there's evil. And no, if you're not battle ready, there can be a, there can be an attack. You just need to be prepared and, and, and do that. But greater is he is in you. So don't fear, don't worry, go as a warrior of Jesus, as his, as his light to the world and do it. And so I know some people are like, I'm never going to do that. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus wants you to. Yeah. He didn't tell you to go for not, for no reason. He wants you to go out and share with us and he wants you to disciple and minister to people. So, all right. That's Excellent. Really, yeah. Well, there were three different groups of people in the crowd that day. The Passover visitors from outside of Judea, the local people who witnessed the raising of Lazarus, and the religious leaders who were greatly concerned what Jesus might do at the feast. Yeah. Well, to the religious leader, it appears that Jesus was actually seeking to incite a revolution and establish himself as king. I can imagine they're like, what they're like, is going he's on? He's going to take over. Yeah. What yeah. is going on? But that was not what he had in mind. Nope. I mean, Jesus, this event meant for him to be obedient to the Father's will and to fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9 9. I mean, that's that's a given. But the people thought and did was not as important to him as to be obedient to the Father. Amen. So, I mean, the, the bottom line that we learn from Jesus always is it's not, our life isn't about you. Okay. So I, it's like, we wake up in the morning, like, Oh, honey, am I, could you do this for me? And I need this or, Oh, I can't do this. And, or you get mad at people. They cut me off on the road or someone calls you and they give you a curveball. Oh, you stupid. Da, da, da. Everything that happens in your life has nothing to do with you. <laughs> it's always about him. It's always about you being obedient to the father and adjusting your life so that the father is glorified. We have to get that into our heads. And we, we, we go through life thinking it's about us. We, we deserve this. We work so hard. I deserve, <laughs> I hate it when people say you deserve that. Um, you know what we deserve? We deserve hell mm. and we deserve death. But by the grace of God, we give, we're given life and freedom. Amen. But, uh, but I mean, again, so just, just know that. But here's, here's what I see, okay? We are, a fulfill, we are fulfilling an unwritten prophecy when we're obedient to the Lord. And I, and I say that, and listen to what I'm saying. I believe that if there was a book written about us a thousand years ago, because God knows everything about us way before it happened, and that every time that I choose to be obedient, I'm fulfilling an unwritten prophecy. That was prophetic. Jesus is, 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 is fulfilling Zechariah 9.9. It talked about him. Right. Every time that I'm doing something for God, I'm fulfilling something that God has already put in play. He already knows it. And I'm being obedient and he's being glorified. And so that's the way I kind of look at it. So, I mean, it's just know that God knows he has, you have a purpose. He knows what's happening in your life today. He knows the circumstances. He knows everything. And that we're just to continue to move forward, love him, trust him, be content. Don't wrestle with things. That's the thing. Oh, I wish I was doing this. Oh, I wish I had a better mm. job. Oh, I wish I was not in this situation. Oh, I wish I had more money. Or oh, I wish I... Dude, be content, thrive in your moment, bring him glory, and just be obedient and love on him, just like the Father, like Jesus taught us for the Father here. Trust this plan. Huh? That's it. All right. All right. What did this demonstration mean to the Romans? Yeah. No, nothing in history is recorded about the Roman viewpoint, but it is certain that they kept a close watch. Oh, that I'm day. sure. I'm sure. They had to be smiling at Jesus riding down on a baby, a baby call with uh, with palm branches being laid on the ground. Yeah, can you, can you imagine? the scene? Yeah. yeah, no, I know. I just <laughs> they're like, about, what is this guy look doing? All this little baby call He's on a little there. tiny. He couldn't even get a horse. <laughs> King, king of the Jews, huh? All right. Yeah, I'm sure. They, didn't feel it, had to be com it had to be comical oh, to yeah. the Romans. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but it's, it's funny at the same time, the Pharisees are afraid of them, right? It's just weird. Palm branches laid on the ground. It would have been completely different than their, meaning the Romans, triumphal entry. Yeah. Whenever a Roman general was victorious, I did some research on this. I was looking it up in a foreign, uh, on a foreign soil. Wait, you need like a trumpet. Bump yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Killing, whenever they killed like 5,000 of the enemy and gaining new territory, whenever they were, they were take back new territory, um, they were given a, ro a Roman triumph. When he returned to the city, it was like a grand splendor occasion. It was a lot of pomp. It was a lot of parade. It was like amazing. It was big, 
right? You remember the movie Aladdin? The, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, kids yeah. Movie? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When he comes, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, what the, I imagine. The big parade yeah, yeah. of the elephants and all this. That's yeah. what I envision as well. Yeah, so, but the comparison <laughs> of Jesus' entry versus the Roman triumphal entry was Jesus' entry was lowly and nothing in comparison. Nope. You know, Jesus is not looking for the pomp, but humility. And Jesus changes, changed far more pe people's lives than 5,000. Jesus, because of what he did, billions of people's lives were saved mm. from, from having the eternal death and, da and damnation. So, I mean, Jesus was far greater. So the example for us is the first will be last and the last will be first humble yourself. You know, my, my pastor would always say, Hey, if you, you, you're called in the ministry, here's, here's the mop and here's the broom and go at it. You know? And it's like, that's the mentality. You know, Jesus is telling, Hey, you're a warrior and a soldier, get in line, follow me. It's like, he's not saying, Hey, you're better than anybody else. He's just saying, Hey, we're all in this together. We're, we're warriors for Jesus. We all have our roles. We all have our gifts, but there's no greater. Hmm. We're all, we're all humble. And that's what Jesus taught us. It's like, here is the the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Here's the 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 God of the universe riding on a lowly thing coming in and his triumphal entry. <laughs> what a great picture. So, all right. All right, where we are. <laughs> what did the triumphal entry mean for the people of Israel? The pilgrims welcomed Jesus. They spread their garments before him and waved palm branches as symbols of peace and victory. And they quoted Psalm 118, 26, which is a, a messianic palm. They proclaimed him king of Israel, but while they were doing this, Jesus was weeping. Yeah, we find this in Luke 19, 37 through 44. You want to read that real quick? Yeah, let me, let me put it up. <clears throat> so a lot of times when you read John, you're not getting this context. And, and Jesus, as he's looking at this happening, he's actually crying. So let's read it. So John 19, verse 37 through 44. As he was drawing near, already on the way down to the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory on highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, mm. saying, Would that you, even you, have known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hide hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side mm. and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Yeah. And I, you know, we've talked about this a little bit in the, in the prep, but it's like this, it's like you have, um, it's like we have friends. Okay. And then there's some friends that we know that are following the Lord and they're loving the Lord and their lifestyles are being good and everything else. And then we have other friends that go to church, they do all this stuff, but there's no lifestyle change. There's just no relationship there. And it just breaks my heart because it's like, why are you still suffering through all of these things when there's, when Jesus is there to, to get you through this? And why are you still doing that? And it's the same thing with God here. It's like, <clears throat> he came, he's met them, he's loving on them, and they just are not receiving him. They're not, they're not surrendering their lives to them. And he's just basically saying, hey, I'm right here. But, you know, the nation is wasting its opportunity. Its leaders did not know the time of God's visitation. They were ignorant in their own scripture. It just blows my mind. They know the word of they God. They have it memorized. And they just did yeah. not see this. Yeah. Uh, you know, the next time Israel sees the king, the scene will be radically different. Remember, Revelation is 19.11. It says, then I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called faithful mm. and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. He will come in glory, not in humility, and the armies of heaven will accompany him. You know, yeah, and he's it, not riding in on a little cult next time. No, nope, he's coming back in the real deal. And then when he steps foot on that tip of mound, it's enough. And it's and he's wiping it all out. But here's the funny part with what I see is Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, he's sent, ascended to the right hand of the, the Father, but then he gave us the Holy Spirit. And then he also gave us confidence. Um, I, I no longer live, but Christ lives within me. And, and it gave me boldness hmm. and, and, and he, and he gave, and he gives me this power, the supernatural power over darkness. 
And, you know, before Jesus, you didn't really have this authority, right? But Romans 16 says that we now crush Satan beneath our, our feet. You know, when Satan, when Jesus took victory back from Satan and says, you're no longer the God of this world, I have now claimed ownership. He didn't just say, you know, passive with him. Nah, he put him underneath his neck. I mean, he does, he says, ah, you're destroyed. You're done with, period. And we now have that same authority as Jesus gave us. And, and, and so on earth, you know, Satan might come against you, but we come against you in the name of our Lord, our father, you know, our God, as David would say, we, we have the power of God and there is no darkness that can come against us. There is no, no enemy that can defeat us. And um, we can live victoriously. We can live with confidence. We can live with boldness because of what Jesus did. And, and, and But he's taught us how to do that because Jesus did all of that on the earth, right? But he did it in lowly form. He did it with humility. He did not make himself nothing, but he gave the father all the credit. And we're to do the same thing. I, I, have, I have, it's not by my might nor by my power. But by the spirit, says the Lord, as the Bible says, and I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's because God has given me that and it's, and it's for his glory, but I can, I can walk in obedience. I can walk with authority. I can walk in boldness. I can do things supernaturally because of what Jesus did. And the best part about it is he didn't come to annihilate him at that time. But one day he's going to say enough. So as he, when he started over with Noah's Ark, when he wiped out the earth and he started over, he's going to do the exact same thing. So he began with Genesis one in the beginning, God created heaven and earth and he created a sanctuary for us to have fellowship with him. Well, it's going to happen again in Revelation 20. It's 21. It's going to new heaven and new earth are coming in. And, and it's the bookends of the bookend from the beginning of the beginning is going to happen. And so that's what's going to happen. But he has to wipe us all out first. He has to say, who are mine? John 17, I know mine. And then the people that are not his, you're toast. I'm sorry, it's going to happen. It's the truth. The wheat and the chaff, huh? Yeah. I love the, you said boldness probably five times in yeah. that. And it just, it's such a good reminder. I think we forget, I forget that, uh, um, you know, that this, how is it said? Pastor Barry said it in the last sermon that I heard him preach. Um, just what a reminder that we, Inside of us, if you're a child of God, you have the same power that rose Jesus from the grave residing inside of you. Yep. And it's so easy for me, you, us to forget that. And man, we we should be living bold. We yeah. should be standing tall. We're a child yeah. of the king. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. it doesn't get any bigger than that. No. But we walk around, oh, what was me? I and mean, like, man, you're just mm -hmm. missing it. You've mm -hmm. got the power. Use it. Mm -hmm. When you live in freedom, there's nothing weighting you down. And it's like, you know, Jesus says, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. Yeah. Well, there's nothing weighing you down. <laughs> Jesus has taken it all away. That's right. And so we should be lighthearted. We should be joyful. We should, Christians should be having the best time in the world. Well, he's like, well, we got it all. The, we got that's all the right. answers. We know right. everything. That's right. We know the end, um, you know, and we have power and authority to do supernatural things. We can move mountains, the Bible says. So we should not be living passively. No. We should be living aggressively for God's kingdom. Bold. 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 Very. All right. right. Lastly, how did the Jewish leaders respond to the triumphal entry? The Pharisees were, were quite sure that Jesus had won the day. They were anticipating some kind of general revolt during the Passover season. How little did they really understand the mind and heart of the master? Mm. What they did not realize was that Jesus was forcing their hands so that the Sanhedrin would act during the feast. Yeah, Jesus knew the whole time. So from the very beginning, he says, all right, the time has come. Yep. And he told, him, he told him, he told him time has come. And so the, you know, he said, all right, it's time and he's, he's going to die soon. But the, the bottom line in all this is the lamb of God had to give his life when the Passover lambs were being slain. Ooh. He timed it. Perfect. So he timed it. And he knew that that was going to happen. So I, I, I wrote in my notes, I said, he willingly took the sin of the world and put it onto himself and willingly sacrificed his life and spilt his blood so that we do not have to spend eternity in hell separated from him. Mm. Because he loved us so much, he sacrificed himself. Because he desired an intimate relationship with us, he paid the ultimate price. He was the sacrificial lamb. He walked 
this earth holy and blameless and gave us an example and showed us how we can do that and follow likewise. And so when we study the Bible and when we studied John 12, we learned a lot about Jesus' character just in this. We learned about humility. We learned about sacrifice. We learned about giving everything so that he is glorified. We learned that it's more important to please the father than it is to please man. Hmm. And in, in all of that, we, we, if we accept this as truth, and if we bring this reality into our lives, the Bible says in Romans 12, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We are changed. We are different. And if we are different uh, for God, our life is so much more freer. And, 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 and there's so much, we give more clarity. We have more vision. We have more understanding. We have more wisdom. Everything changes when we give our lives to Jesus. Everything changes when we surrender and believe on his word. And we allow it to just penetrate deeply within us. Everything changes when we talk with Jesus daily. Everything changes when we just say, God, I need you. Help me today. And if that's you and you're listening to this and you're crying out in your own mm -hmm. heart and you're wanting to, to get right with God and you want, maybe you need to repent of your sins. And if that's you, you can do that. Just say, God, I repent. I want to do it your way. I want to turn from all this bad that I'm doing. I want to learn to cry out to the Holy Spirit to get me through it, to strengthen me, to guide me and to direct me. And I want to, I want to put, I want to spend more of my time in your word. I want to spend more of my time praying. I want to spend more of my time positioning myself to be in the presence of God. I want to, I want to see people the way that you see them. And if that's you, just say, God, help. Lord, I repent. I, I want this, Lord. I want to do that. And then surround yourself with people that can help you. Yeah. You know, find men, find women that can be there for you and, and be involved in church and a good Bible believe in church and, and find, you know, put yourself in that position to succeed and just start and don't allow Satan to lie to you and, and don't allow him to keep kicking you down because there's an enemy and we know that he wants to kill you and destroy you. So don't believe the lie, believe the truth. Jesus loves you, period. And he desires to walk with you every step of your life. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to give you purpose. He wants to give you life. He wants to protect you. He wants to provide for you. He wants to be all things to you. Believe that and don't believe the lie. Amen. And if you're sitting here listening and says, well, I don't even know Jesus personally. Well, you could do that now. You know, I, 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 it's extremely it's simple. He just tells you, he says, you know, humble yourself, ask me for forgiveness of my sins. So just cry out in your heart, Lord, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. And then he says that you are to believe upon him, that you're to believe that he's God, that you're to believe that he rose again on the third day and that you acknowledge that. And so you say in your heart, Lord, I ask you forgive me of my sins. And I believe that I ask, I believe that you died on the cross on the third day. I believe that you are the author and finisher of my life. I believe that you are the son of God. And then he says, go and confess it to everybody. He says, confess this to people and say, listen, you're saved. If you believe on the son of God and you repent of your sins and you, and you, and you want to follow him and you choose to show, do with that life, the Bible says that you're saved. And he says, now go tell it on the mountaintops. Go share it with your friends. Go tell it to your family and let them know. It says, I have given my life to the Lord today and he has come into my life. And the Bible says, then he says, all the angels in heaven are now rejoicing because of what you did. It's that simple. This is not rocket science. That's what's mind boggling to people. So what, I don't have to do this and do that and do all these things. No, Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you. I freely give you the gift of salvation just for believing in me. I freely, I died so that you can have a relationship with me. I died so that you are no longer separated from the author and finisher of your life, from the God of the universe, from the King of Kings. You can now come boldly into his throne room and have a conversation with him. There's nothing greater in the world than that. 
And so, Bob, if they did give their life to the Lord or if that, that someone took place, how can they get a hold of us so that we yeah. can help reach out to Man, them? Man, we would love to hear about that. So you can go to our website. It's uh, riotpodcast.co.co. Uh, you can we got all kinds of resources there to help you out, to help your journey and uh, reach out to us and just let us know. We can get you in contact with a, a good Bible-believing church in your area. We can uh, get you some resources that just help your journey get started. But don't, don't just stand there by yourself. Yeah. And then, man, you can reach out to us on any of our social media platforms on, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram. Um, it's the Riot Podcast. You can reach out to us there. And don't forget about YouTube. And Pete mentioned this earlier. Man, you know, if, if you're listening to the show or you're watching the show on YouTube, one of the, the greatest gifts that you could give uh, is to just share the yeah. show. Not for us, not, no. not, you know, not to make Pete's hair famous or anything <laughs> like that. It's just to share Jesus. I mean, you can share the show, and by doing so, you're 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 sharing Jesus. We 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 do these shows uh, honestly for an audience of one. Amen. We're we're just trying to we're trying to lift up Jesus, make him famous, mm. and uh, so there's an opportunity. You can just share it on all of those platforms, and uh, man, your friends, you you have connections and you have um, relationships with with people that maybe nobody else will ever yeah. be able to reach Amen. so by taking the time and just sharing it or or just say hey you know i heard this and i thought it was fascinating why don't you check it out mm. it's just it's a really easy way to share uh to share your faith and to share uh who jesus is so we just ask you to do that and uh comment we'd love to hear from you we like to yeah pete and i talk about it all the time we, we like to hear where people are listening from mm. you know we've had uh, people comment from all over the world and it's just it's cool to hear that uh, hey, there's somebody listening in uh, I don't know um, New Jersey or yeah. Montana yeah. or Belgium. You know, it's just it's just kind of cool. So do that for us too. But like it, share it, and subscribe. Those are the those are the magic the magic trio there. And again, it's not for our kingdom; it's to build His kingdom. Amen. What an amazing show, Pete! It's good to be back yeah. in the Book of John. Yeah. I love so love powerful. love this book. Yeah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you as you just continue to journey in your relationship and walk with him. Have a good week. Have a great week of worship, guys. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.